Now, moving on, we've got our first speaker today, and uh, I'm really pleased to uh, introduce Wahi, Wahi Zatal Azmi from uh, Malaysia. She's been doing a lot of work on red palm weevil in the Pacific. So let's learn from Wahi and her team and uh, see what's actually happening there and what she's doing. So Wahi, welcome to the uh, to the room. Uh, if you want to just tell me when you want to move the slides, I will do that for you. So uh, my name is uh, Wahi Zatu, uh, and I'm from uh, University of Malaysia Trungganu. Uh, I'm working on uh, Red Palm Weevil since 2012. And uh, today I would like to share with all of you uh, about the current status of Red Palm Weevil or RPW, especially in Malaysia. So uh, can you please go to the next slide? Okay, uh, for this uh, presentation, uh, these are the outlines of my uh, presentation, which include of the introduction, uh, the current status of attack in Malaysia, I will uh, explain uh, in general um, when is the red palm weevil was uh, first recorded in Malaysia and how RPW killed the coconut palms, uh, the current management control of RPW that has been practiced uh, so far, and uh, some of my current research activity uh, at my university, and just a little bit of conclusion and potential of future research. Next. Okay, uh, this if you look here uh, on this slide, this is the red palm weevil, or the scientific name is Rhipophorus ferruginus. Uh, there are the adults and the larvae. So, uh, as you know, this uh, insect pest is a very serious pest, especially for the uh, palms. It includes of coconut palm, dead palm, or palm, and many, many more. And uh, based on the previous record, there are about 29 different palm species has been identified as the host of these uh, insect pests. Uh, the problem of uh, these uh, pests is we cannot detect the infestation in the early stage because uh, the infestation is actually made by the larvae. So as you can see here, the larvae are concealed, they are trunk borer, and they are not exposed. They can be found on the top or on the crown of the coconuts only the adults are exposed. That's why we cannot detect uh, the early uh, symptom of uh, infestation uh, from these pests. And uh, for your information, it is a very serious threat to Malaysia's coconut industry and potentially threat to the oil palm also. Next. Okay, I uh, just want to show you uh, the, the scientific the taxonomy position, which is, uh, it is belong to all the Coleoptera. Uh, family is actually Dryptori day. Uh, it has been revised, uh, not only not in the Cook community, but it actually it is under Dryptori day. And uh, the common names, uh, some of the uh, references uh, they wrote as a uh, Asiatic uh, palm weevil. Uh, and for information, this species has been listed uh, as uh, number two or A two list of European and Mediterranean Plant Protection Organization in two thousand seven. And this is a very uh, past, it is past important for coconut palms, not only in Malaysia, but also in India, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Burma, uh, Pakistan. Uh, and it has been uh, reported uh, for all palm in India and also did palm uh, for the Middle East and Mediterranean region. Next. And if you look here, uh, this table shows the list of host plants uh, for the red palm weevil from uh, different uh, previous reports. And uh, if you look here, there are about uh, six to seven species of host uh, plant that has been recorded in Malaysia, which include of uh, coconut, uh, ribbon, uh, fan palm, Chinese fan palm, sago palm, royal palm, or also uh, date palm. Next. Okay, um, due to that, uh, the these uh, species has been uh, gazetted as uh, harmful pests uh, based on Plant Quarantine Act 1976 by Department of uh, Agriculture of Malaysia. And if you look here, these are the book of uh, IAS or Invasive Alien Species in Malaysia published in 2018. And uh, it has, uh, for information, uh, coconut has uh, been cultivated in more than 92 countries. And uh, among the 
biggest producers are the Indonesia, Philippines, India, and Sri Lanka. And so far, uh, out of that, more than 14 countries uh, have been reported, uh, been infested by RPW. Whereas the date palm, it has been grown in uh, more than 30 countries, uh, such as Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Iran, and so far, more than 50 countries have been officially uh, infested with RPW. Next. And okay, this uh, map uh, I took from Giblin Davis. Uh, it shows the distribution of uh, rank forest species. Uh, in, this is the map of the worldwide. And if you look here, the distribution of the rank forest species uh, restricted in the tropical region where the palm uh, trees can be grown. Okay, next. So uh, actually there are about uh, 10 species under genus Rancophorus. And uh, in Malaysia so far, there are two species of Rancophorus can be found, which are uh, Rancophorus uh, balderatus. If you look at the picture, the, the larger one, the striped one is Rancophorus balderatus. And the other one is the, the smaller one is the Rancophorus pregenus. So far, we only have these two species. Next. Okay. Um, so uh, how these species uh, become uh, the highlight of our uh, coconut palm industry in Malaysia. So uh, for information, uh, this uh, species was first reported uh, in my state, uh, which is uh, Trunganu. It is situated in the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia. In the, uh, so it was reported in early 2007 in a very small uh, district uh, named Statu at Butapai. And then after uh, year by year, the population getting uh, increased drastically. And after that, in 2011, uh, a very intensive survey on the RPW infestation uh, has uh, been made by the Department of Agriculture of Tungganu State. And they found that these uh, species have uh, infested in uh, more than 800 locations, only in Tungganu. And uh, after that, in 2020, uh, this RPW was first uh, found in East Coast Peninsula Malaysia, which uh, are in Trungganu and Kelantan. But now, in most states of Peninsula Malaysia, have been reported with this uh, uh, species. And it causing severe damage, especially to the coconut palms. Next. So, uh, okay, this map shows uh, the distribution of RPW in 2007. As I mentioned that it was first reported in uh, one of the districts in Trunganu, and uh, these species attack uh, one of the cultivars named aromatic dwarf pandan. So it was uh, first detected in the pandan uh, cultivar, which is one of the best, uh, the most popular um, cultivar of coconuts in Malaysia. Then, uh, next please. Uh, after that, uh, okay, next. Okay, in 2011, uh, see, in uh, less than 10 years, uh, the population uh, increased drastically and from one district uh, in a state, it has spread to almost to each of the states. So there are about uh, seven to eight districts at that time. And if you can see here uh, during the um, survey, uh, what, the, what the, the Department of Agriculture did, the uh, they deployed the pheromone trap and they managed to catch uh, two uh, species of Rancophorus, which were pharyngeus and Valeratus. And if you look here, uh, the distribution of pharyngeus is uh, was more, uh, I mean, distributed in the coastal area, in the coastline, especially where the coconut palms are found abundantly. Whereas the Valeratus, the striped one, it also uh, uh, can be found on the pheromone trap, but most of the distribution is more on the on uh, inland. Next, okay. Uh, so this uh, uh, I got this from the Department of Agriculture. In this is in twenty twenty, and if you look here, it has spread to other states, not only in Trungganu but other states, including in the northern part. So uh, until now, most of the states has been uh, reported with this uh, with the infestation of the RPW. Next. Okay, uh, how RPW killed the coconut palm? So if you look there, uh, here, 
this is the female of adult RPW. It has a very uh, long uh, mouth part we call as snout. Uh, at the apical of the mouth is the uh, sclerotized uh, or very, very um, sharp mandible. It has tridented, means three tooth that can uh, make the hole on the top of the crown of the uh, coconut palms. So what uh, the female did, the female will make the hole, uh, she will bore the hole and she will deposit the eggs. Okay, and then the eggs was uh, actually in the in the cabbage or, or the crown of the coconut. And after three to five days, uh, the, uh, the eggs will be hatched and the larvae will consume all the soft tissues in the cabbage area. So uh, that's what is the problem where we cannot uh, detect the early infestation because it is inside the crown. So if you look at the infested palms, it looks healthier. The palms can still produce uh, the fruits, but actually inside uh, the cabbage is the uh, a lot of larvae or we can, uh, I mean, the development of the larvae are very, very uh, increased or drastic in the crown. So after three to four months, uh, uh, the you can see that the um, the petiole or the leaves of the trees are getting uh, uh, get, get down like the shape or skirting shape leaves like that, and this actually is the is too late. Meaning that if you look here, the coconut cabbage or the crown is totally gone. So it's too late to save the coconut. That's why we need to save the coconut palms especially during the early symptom, where it is very difficult because coconut trees is very tall and it's hard to see uh, the, the early uh, uh, sign or symptoms and the, at the top of the coconut palms. Okay, so this is how the RPW kill. Okay, can, can you go to the previous? Okay, next, please. Okay, so um, throughout our uh, study, we found a lot of uh, morphs or variations, especially on the adults. We found a lot of sizes. Some are very large, some are very smaller. And then especially the pronotal markings. If you look here, uh, some have different number of pronotal markings and even shape are uh, very various. And I think more than 30 morphs or variations can be found uh, in, the, in these species. And uh, what we did uh, before this, we compared with the vulnerators and then we did the molecular analysis and it shows that this is uh, uh, red palm weevil or red forest ferruginous, not the hybrid between the ferruginous and vulnerators. It is uh, identical to ferruginous, but it is this is what happened if the polymorphism uh, occurred meaning that you can find a lot of uh, mobs or variations, especially in the adults. Okay, next. Uh, yeah, I just want to show you even the elytra, uh, the, I mean, uh, the sclerotized front wing also have different colored and some have black or reddish and uh, even the venation of the wings also different. Next, please. Okay, I uh, just want to show you some of the pictures uh, showing the damages of red palm weevil that are uh, made to the coconut palms in Trunganyu. Uh, if you look here, this is already too late. Uh, most of the coconuts have been infested. Uh, the, the symptom is clearly obvious. Okay, next. And um, if... Uh, and uh, yeah, we also uh, found that uh, uh, besides attacking the on top on the cabbage of the coconut palm, uh, the red palm weevil also attack at the root system. Uh, so if you look here at this picture, uh, the attack is started from the root system, not from the top. So it can be on top or uh, on the ground uh, uh, system. So uh, and. It's, uh, if you look here, uh, the trees look healthier, uh, can produce the fruits, but uh, inside the trunk is the hollow uh, or the bore, uh, or the hollow um, uh, or holes made by the larvae. So the larvae is very, very aggressive. They eat 24 hours, uh, especially to the soft tissues of the coconut. Next, please. And um, during the uh, survey, uh, 
uh, I joined the Department of Agriculture of Terengganu, where they cut a lot of infested trees. And uh, so we can, we found all the stages, including the larvae of different instars and also the pupae inside the cocoon and also uh, the adults in the same host or in the same trees. So um, yeah, uh, if you look here, uh, most of the larvae can be found on the uh, cabbage part, whereas the, uh, co uh, the cocoon or the pupa can be found on the uh, fiber parts, especially in the petiole. And uh, we also found there's a newly image of adults uh, from the cocoon that has uh, developed inside the trees. Next. Next. Uh, yeah, I just want to share with you that uh, due to that, uh, there's a lot of highlights in the local newspapers, uh, mass media about the uh, the impact of this infestation. Uh, next. Um, yeah, and other newspapers, uh, articles from the okay. Yeah, if you look here, uh, these pictures uh, shows the, the symptoms of RP attack. And if you found one of the trees has been infested. Uh, the next, the neighboring uh, trees of the coconut is for sure has been attacked by these pests. So uh, after a few months, uh, next please. This is what we saw. Uh, all the trees, all the infested trees uh, is like this. So it's very, very uh, severe. And uh, this is one of the um, um, highlights also because uh, oil palm is also um, uh, another important industry to Malaysia. And uh, from my studies, uh, we found that uh, RPW, especially the larvae, also uh, preferred or consumed the cabbage of the oil palm. And uh, this is very, very uh, worrying because if the coconut palms uh, have been fully uh, attacked by these pests, and it's uh, probably it will shift to the another host, which is the oil palm. Next. So uh, uh, the current management control of RPW consists of um, many categories. It is considered as IPM, Integrated Pest Management. And uh, most of the countries uh, apply all these techniques, which include of uh, cultural, uh, physical, mechanical, biological, and chemical. And even in Malaysia, um, uh, one of the challenges that we face uh, is the coconut trees is everywhere, uh, not only in the commercialized um, farm, which is it's easy to control, to manage, but the uncontrolled is the uh, wild coconuts, or meaning that the coconuts that can be found everywhere in the uh, around, uh, along the coastline, as well as in the parks and also in the villages. So um, basically, if uh, the farmers own a large a coconut farm, they will um, apply all these techniques, which include of the clean cultivation, sanitation, and then uh, the mass trapping using the pheromone, uh, which is uh, most of the common pheromone that I have been used in relation is the ferulio from Costa Rica, which is the, practice, uh, the current practice uh, or practical use so far in Malaysia. And uh, biological control so far, um, not uh, farmers are willing to do that, but we have some farmers that have been uh, practiced using the bio biological control. Uh, so if you see here, I highlighted the entomopatitic fungus because uh, this is my current research where I try to develop a biological control using this uh, fungus. And uh, the most popular technique is of course the chemical control where uh, the techniques uh, consist of the topical treatment, especially for the small trees, uh, the stem injection, and also soil drenching. But this is uh, unlikely because uh, it is very harmful uh, and toxic to the environment. Next, please. Oh, five minutes, Rahi. Okay. Okay, uh, this is my current research uh, at my university, University of Malaysia Chunganu. Uh, where uh, I uh, currently uh, develop a uh, formulated emulsion formulated of metharism and supply uh, because uh, we want to apply this in the field. Because as you know, uh, in Malaysia, we have a very extreme temperature 
UV lights and also uh, humidity. So we need to make sure that uh, the viability of these fungus uh, can be uh, pro uh, enhanced and also persistent, especially in the uh, extreme temperature like Malaysia. So, um, so this uh, research is uh, funded by uh, one of the industries, uh, which is uh, Sandarbi Research. So, uh, and also I also collaborated with uh, University of Putra Malaysia, where we try to find a, a, the right formulation to uh, coat the spore with the oil or emulsion. So next, please. So uh, I will not uh, uh, explain in detail, but uh, from this study, uh, as you know, uh, metabolism and isoprene is a pathogenic fungus, especially to the insects. So if you look here, uh, when the conidia uh, attach on the exoskeleton of the red palm weevil, it will uh, uh, develop the germ tube and then the, it will penetrate uh, across the cuticle of red palm weevil. Uh, by producing a toxin uh, like chitinase and protease. So, uh, and then the conidia will enter into the uh, body cavity of the red palm weevil, where there's a lot of uh, nutrients like the hemolymph. So, uh, the uh, conidia will develop, will terminate, and after that, uh, it will uh, sporulate and it will kill uh, the host or the insects. Uh, silently and within one or two days the insect will uh, form dead and after one week you can find a lot of hyphae and spores on the cadavers, cadavers of the red palm weevil so this uh yeah so this is uh how the emulsion formulation uh came so we um we uh, use the surfactants glycerin uh, the the cornelia the active ingredients and some of the uh, chemicals. I'm not the person that is uh, specialized on this uh, field, but uh, what we found that the performance of uh, the metabolisms under envir uh, unfavorable environmental conditions, especially in the field, has been increased. Uh, the persistency is increased and the infectivity has been enhanced compared with the uh, spore suspension or the water-based formulations. Okay, next. So uh, we found that uh, in less than two weeks, uh, all the 100% of the infected IPW have been killed. And uh, as I said, uh, it takes uh, about one to two days to kill the IPW. And in less than two weeks, you can see uh, the hyphae, the spores growing uh, on the cadavers of the uh, IPW. So uh, the formulated uh, metabolism dispersed better than the spore suspension. Uh, so it shows that these formulations have a very good uh, to be applied in the field because it has high chance uh, to uh, the uh, of the uh, the spores or the conidia adhere onto the critical of the RPW, and it leads to the more balanced and repeatable application, and which uh, shows also the disease uh, spreading ability of the formulated uh, metabolism and supply. So this is what is uh, what my team and I are currently uh, doing in our uh, laboratories now uh, by developing the formulated. So uh, in order to uh, confirm whether uh, the RPW was killed by this uh, uh, isolate, we did the molecular analysis and it confirmed, it shows that the infection uh, is caused by the uh, isolates by our uh, native isolate, uh, metabolism and supply, not by other fungi. Okay, next, please. So uh, this is actually my uh, last slide. Um, um, so uh, as a conclusion, um, uh, after about more than 10 years, I've been involved in uh, red palm weevil uh, research. I'm not studying on the biocontrol agent. I also studied on the uh, biological aspects, ecological aspects of the red palm weevil, as well as the um, technique to control using the pheromone trappings and many, many more. And uh, so far, I think uh, we need uh, uh, an innovation, especially in developing the device that can detect the pest early. This is uh, the gap of uh, the current situation. 
And uh, besides that, we also need uh, a very effective methods of delivery of chemicals because uh, uh, we don't want to kill our target species. As we know, all most of the beneficial insects or beneficial invertebrates can be found uh, in our environment. So the technique to deliver the chemical uh, application is very important. And also uh, improving the tra trapping uh, system is uh, crucial crucially uh, important as well. And uh, currently uh, about the chemical ecology, meaning that uh, by detecting the, the pheromone or the chiromone release uh, by these pests can also help to detect uh, early for the infested uh, coconuts. And um, yes, of course, we need several biocontrol agents uh, over the, uh, and it should be found and we need a uh, best of effective formulation when we apply in the field. So in the field is different in the lab compared in the lab. That's why we need to, to make sure that the biocontrol can be uh, delivered or applied effectively, uh, especially in a very extreme condition. And uh, we need innovation, not only in the research, but also in the refinement and validation. And this is uh, important for the sustainability of the RPW management, where it needs more effort uh, to develop eco-friendly strategies. I think that's all uh, from me. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic Thank presentation, Rahi. Really, really interesting. And it's um, we're really delighted to have you share what you're doing uh, on that pest and also uh, your experience with it. And it looks like it's quite devastating, the damage. Why, just a quick question, um, and you had quite a few questions. <laughs> so we're going to run through quite quickly. If we don't have a chance, because I know you have to go to the airport as well, so why he has to leave us. <laughs> but but um, you could also maybe answer a few uh, in the by writing. But a quick question: What? Why is it? What? What? How do you think it arrived in in Malaysia in your in your part of Malaysia? Because it seems it's it's arrived. In the first report was around two thousand and seven. By two thousand and eleven, it already spread very quickly. And by twenty twenty two, I mean it's all across Malaysia. There, if that that uh, so so why what's okay. driving that expansion? And and what? How do you think it first came? Okay, um, this actually, um, uh, this is actually from uh, previous uh, department uh, of agriculture officers. Uh, uh, it is like more, more, more on the speculations uh, where um, it has been uh, reported that there are uh, imported dead pumps that, uh, that were not properly quarantined, uh, have been imported from the Middle East uh, that contain uh, probably eggs or larvae. And then uh, it came across to uh, Kelantan and also Trunganu. And during that time, uh, it's like a viral when uh, most of the local farmers, they like to plant dead palms. Uh, yeah. because it, it's for the landscape, actually. And uh, because of that, um, it is it was speculated that uh, once the larvae uh, emerged to the adults, they found the, the right host plants in Malaysia is the coconuts. And um, that's why uh, it was uh, after that, uh, the, uh, the infestation has increased uh, from uh, another district to another district. And uh, we, we, we try to understand how it um, can spread very, very fast because uh, we know that this uh, species is native to Asian region. But when we uh, collaborated with some molecular biologists, uh, we found that uh, the haplotype, uh, the DNA haplotype of the samples that we caught is actually uh, the is originated from the Mediterranean part. So it it uh, it can be uh, that's why we uh, noticed that it's uh, I mean this is the behavior of uh, IAS the invasive alien species where uh, it's kill uh, very aggressive, very dominant uh, in the local situation. So um, I hope that it answers your question. No, no, that, that's excellent. And I think that just underscores the importance around this um, trade routes <laughs> and the need for a very strong uh, phytosanitary and um, control measures there at, at borders. So that's really interesting. I've got a question here around 
how you are applying um, the uh, intermethanogenic, sorry, fungus, um, metarhizium, how do you apply apply that in the palm tree? Okay. So uh, in the field, uh, as we know that, um, uh, as I mentioned in the earlier of my presentation, that it's very hard uh, to detect uh, the larvae because it is internal borer. So uh, in this case, we attack, we target the adults. So uh, there are two techniques so far that we have uh, developed. This is uh, one of the my pro one of my projects with Margi, where we uh, develop uh, a pheromone trap. So uh, with the fungus inside the pheromone trap, meaning that we only uh, attract the RPW to go inside the pheromone trap. And when they uh, go to the pheromone trap, they will uh, actually accidentally uh, attach the metarhizium on the trap. And then uh, the trap is, will not, uh, I mean, trap the RPW. It will, uh, we have the kind of the uh, design where the, uh, the trap RPW will release. So we hope that when the infected RPW uh, attach with the, Metarism, it will uh, spread the metarism in their population uh, during mating or during, uh, yeah, when they attach together. Okay. Because, yes, uh, uh, so this is one of the techniques. Another technique that what I did is uh, we catch the uh, RPW and then we, uh, uh, we infect directly to the adults and we release because we oh, don't want to. Okay. Yeah, so that is the technique so far. We cannot uh, spray the metarhizium on top of the cabbage because on top of the cabbage, there's a lot of pollinators. So uh, we don't want okay. to, yep. yeah, the special insects. So, so that's why we need to understand, uh, to know what is the right mechanism to apply the metarhizium for this insect. Excellent, that's fantastic. And you have quite a few questions um, based around that. So uh, I'm going to need to move on, but um, I'm wondering, Wani, if you've got time just before you leave, You've got some, if you go into the Q&A, there's quite a few questions there. Some of them are the same, but if you could choose maybe five or so and answer those, that would be most uh, most helpful. And i just like to say thank you so much. It's really important work. Uh, and also we don't want um, this in other places where it's not already. <laughs> so we really need to... Uh, yeah, support your work and find out more and actually develop a greater understanding of, of what are the solutions. So thank you so much um, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Alison, uh, for inviting me. I will uh, answer the questions in the chat room.